So one time Jesus and his disciples, uh, they, they were headed toward Jerusalem. So holy city, whole bunch of super religious people. Um, and, and when they get there, they're going to encounter some hardships, some difficulty, some injustice. And Jesus knows that that's coming. And so he wants to prepare his disciples for that. Um, and so he tells them a story uh, to get them to start to think about how they need to pray faithfully and never give up. So he, he tells them this story. There was a judge in a certain city who neither feared God nor cared about people. And a widow of that city came to this judge repeatedly saying, oh, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. And the judge ignored her for a while, but finally said to himself, I don't fear God. You guys like my judge voice, right? I don't fear God or care about people. This woman is driving me crazy. That's exactly how he sounded. I'm going to see that she gets justice uh, because she's wearing me out with her constant requests. Basically, uh, Jesus is saying that uh, this, this widow and her persistence and maybe even annoyance um, convinced this, even this bad judge to make the right decision, even if it was for the wrong motivation. I'm sure none of us have ever uh, given in to our little kids based on their persistence or annoyance and let them do something because they were being annoying. Never. Uh, I've never done that. I'm sure you've never done that. Uh, we, we wouldn't do that, right? But Jesus ends this story and this challenge with a, with a statement to his disciples that, that we need to hear and learn today. Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Welcome. Glad you are here this weekend. You've made a great choice uh, by starting your week off this way at Prairie Lakes. And, and uh, hey, we're here for one reason, is to worship God and to, and to just say, God, would you, would you speak to us? So we're in this series, and we're just literally, this is the fourth week, and we're walking through this uh, series of parables, and we're just, it's the stories that Jesus told. And, and I have been encouraged and I have been challenged by him and I hope you have too. And, and the prayer that I have for all of us is as we go through these stories that we just say, okay, God, what do you have for me? What do you have uh, for me? So this weekend, we're going to hit the story of the persistent widow, okay? It's the, it's the persistent widow. Now, here's the deal. It's really hard to wait. <laughs> I'm like the, uh, the poster child for this. Uh, when there's something good happening, when, when I was a kid, I was the, I was the kid who was kind of one shoe on, trying to get out the door to get going. I had a, my birthday's in August, so my birthday in school were always at the same time, and I was always anxious to, to, uh, about it and couldn't wait for it to happen. And I'd almost always get a migraine and be sick on my birthday, and my friends would be playing with my toys. They'd open the presents and play with my new toys while I was up sick in bed. I'll never forget that. It's hard to wait. We took our grandkids uh, skiing last Saturday up to Buck Hill in Minnesota, and we took 11 grandkids up. Not, we did not just KME, our, the families. We all went. And uh, seven of them skied. The four little ones couldn't. But <laughs> we were getting the parking lot. And of course, we're, you know, we're a little bit kind of behind to get them there for their lessons, and we're kind of rushing a little bit. And then some of my grandkids, Owen especially, man, he's just, he's just shaking. It's going. He's trying to get the shoes on so he can go. And it's just, it was, it's just so great. I can remember just big things, good things in my life. You know, I remember I got the engagement ring and uh, I tell guys this all the time. Once you buy that baby, it is going to burn a hole in your pocket. You, you got to give it right. Waiting for my wedding or maybe my wedding night was a bigger deal. Um, having kids, you know, all those things, right? It's hard to wait for good things. And you know, the inverse is, is true too. It's, it's hard to wait um, for bad things to, to get over, to, to get through and the messy, hard things we can sometimes cause us to lose hope and wonder if God really does care. Just in the last two weeks, let me walk down this list. Last two weeks in my world, my little Iowa, if a buddy has a suicidal family member, another that's got a mother dying a long, slow death from cancer, uh, a friend that's getting a divorce that's ended in threats of violence and 
struggling and stalking. Uh, another buddy that has a broken heart from a breakup. Another buddy that has a, a, a lost job after a long career. Another that um, has a potential career ender because he chose to do the right thing instead of the easy thing because of his faith. Uh, another who just had a bad injury and a surgery that's going to be long and, 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 and painful. Uh, another buddy that's got a family member that's battling with depression that's slowly stealing the spirit of that, of that guy. Another selfless and faithful man falsely accused of something. An honoring evil guy who keeps winning and succeeding. Another buddy who, who is experiencing bouts of loneliness because he's a guy who won't compromise in faith and date just to have sex. And I could go on and on, and, and, and you could too. But in these seasons, right, in these seasons, it's pretty easy to lose heart and give up. And when the pressure is on and things aren't right, it's very easy for us to, to repeat what, remember what, what Martha said, right? In the Mary and Martha story, Jesus is going to show up at their house and, and uh, uh, he shows up and he, this, Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And she came to him, Jesus, and asked, Lord, don't you care? That my sister's left me to do all the work by myself. Tell her to help me, right? So, so we're, we're, we're just so tempted, right, in, in these moments to just, where are you, God? Why aren't you showing up? Don't you care? Another time with the disciples in the book of Mark in chapter 4, there's disciples were in a boat, and <laughs> Jesus is sleeping. Then a storm comes up, and he's in the stern, sleeping on a cushion, and the disciples woke him and said to him, everybody ready? Teacher, what do he say? Right? Everybody say it together, ready? Don't you care, right, if, if we drown? And so... All of us, right? All of us. When it, when it comes to the, the, the valley, we can do our best Martha interpretation. Lord, don't you care? Why are you delaying? When we live on this earth and we see all that happens on this earth, we, we cry out sometimes, God, what are you, when are you going to fix this one? It's so easy to lose heart when it feels like God doesn't care or he's not doing his job or he's waiting and we don't know why he's waiting. And my friends, this isn't new, okay? And it's why Jesus told this story that we're gonna, we're gonna dig into this weekend. This isn't new. And this story of the persistent widow is Jesus talking to us about how to wait even when things aren't right. All right, so everybody, Luke 18, okay? So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Luke is the third gospel. And Luke 18, 1 to 8, is the story of the persistent widow. Now, um, uh, it, it's, it's funny, right? Because it starts out as a story about praying and not losing heart. And then it moves to a story about injustice. And it ends with a question uh, about faith. And I was really excited. In fact, when we were lining up this series months ago with Zach and the team, um, the persistent widow is the one that I said, I, I really want to do that one because I love the story and I wanted to teach it. And, and I was some, it's, a little, it's kind of funny. It's kind of hard to understand a little bit. So I thought, I'm really excited about this one. And here's what you need to know as I got into it and studied it and getting ready to teach. I've been convicted and challenged that I have been missing the point of the story. I mean, the the real point, the big point. So here's the deal. Before we get into Luke 18, the persistent widow, we can't deal with the persistent widow story outside of the context that it's in. Last week when, when Jesse was teaching, he, how important the context was to the story that, that he was teaching. And it's, it's the same with this one. So we can't start with the persistent widow because the story Jesus tells doesn't start with the persistent widow. It sits inside of another story. And if you don't read it, if you don't set the persistent widow on top of the story with the foundation that it's set on, you're going to miss at least some of it and mostly the main point of what Jesus is trying to teach, okay? So, so, so here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to go to Luke 18, and you're already there, right? So everybody, with your Bible, right? Luke 18. Um, but I want you to turn back one page on your screen or back one page, you got your physical Bible. And let's go to the end of the Luke 17. And, and, and let's, let, let's start with that. Now, 
There are brackets to the story, and that's how we know that it's set inside of another story. So I want you to see those brackets, okay? So Luke 17, 20, here's, the, here's what it says, okay? It starts off, so this is what we know. Luke 17, 20 says, Once, on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, okay? So 17, 20, it starts with this, this idea of, hey, When's the second coming going to be, Jesus? When is, when is the return, or when, is, when is everything going to get fixed? When is finally God going to take control? Now, they had a little different idea at that point. Jesus hadn't died and was, hadn't been resurrected yet at that point. But when's, when's God finally going to fix things? When's the kingdom of God really going to reign on earth? Okay, so, so that's, the, that's the, the top bracket. And then at the end of our Luke 18 story, at the end of the persistent widow, this is the question. However... When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth, right? So, so it starts with this, this, this second coming and the kingdom of God coming and things finally getting fixed, and it ends with this. So we know that Luke 18, 1 through 8, doesn't stand by itself. It sits on top of what Jesus says here. He starts to talk about what it's going to mean, and then he tells the story, and he ends with when he does come, okay? Okay. So, so that's what we know. Now, here's kind of the big word for this. Um, eschatology is one of those seminary words that's used, but eschatology is just the word for this. It's the study of what the Bible says about end times. What's next? When's it going to happen? What orders are going to come in? What's going to happen when Jesus does come? What's going to happen before he comes? All that is really just the study of the, of the end times. So what we know is this. The persistent widow parable sits squarely on top of a table that's all about eschatology. It's the end times and, and, and what's going to happen there. So, so the second coming of Jesus will finally and completely set things right. That's eschatology. The first coming was, was Christmas, right? They waited, they waited, they waited, and the Bible says at just the right time and in just the right place, the Son of Man appeared, right? Born in Bethlehem, right? And, and then he lived for those 33 years as assigned, and he did what he was called to do. He, he, he lived sinlessly. He, he went to the cross. He died for our sins. He was the perfect sacrifice. He was dead, buried, and resurrected. That was the first coming of Jesus that set this kingdom in place and this desire and want for the kingdom. And eschatology is all about when's it going to happen again? When's he going to come the second time? When Jesus comes back the second time. So, so let's just kind of peruse the 17 just, just for a minute. I want to read the whole thing. You can go back and read this this week. But, but, but it starts off and they say, once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, right? And then Jesus starts to just, just talk about it. And, and, and we, we can glean some things from this, because we don't know a lot. The first thing we can glean is this. The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. And what that observed is calendar. And there's a lot of people that say, Jesus is going to return on, on, on March 23rd of 2024. Or, and, and, and there's been thousands of guys that are wrong. Listen, we don't know, nor are we supposed to know. In fact, Jesus says, the Father knows. Just, just let the Father do his thing. So, so when you have every time you guess, and here's when Jesus is going to return, that, okay, hey, listen, don't buy it. He could come tomorrow. It could be a thousand years. My mentor used to say, I don't think he's going to come for 10,000 years. And, and he would just say that so, he would, so he would, we would, wouldn't get fixated on the time or a calendaring of it. But we can learn a few things about it. You go down to verse 24, and it says this, For the Son of Man in his day will be like lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other, right? So it's going to be a, a, a cosmic thing that everybody's going to see. It's not going to be a hidden event over there. And then he, then he tells two stories, one about Noah and one about Lot. And what he's trying to say is this, that people are going to be going about the day. Just like in the days of Noah, people were marrying and, and, and getting married, and they were, they were doing their thing, and then it happened, the flood happens. And the same with Lot. They were plowing and doing their thing, and then it happens. And then he ends that chapter in 17, he ends 17 and he, and he kind of ends it with this picture of like, so when the Son of Man comes, it's going to be, it's going to be like sudden, and, and it's going to be big, and, and he's going to come get his followers, right? He's going to fix things. He's going to get his followers. And he says, like, two guys will be, uh, be over here, and one will be gone, and two gals will be over here, and, and one will be gone. And so, so that's the story of, of Jesus. That's, that's what, he, what he sets it up to. When Jesus comes back the second time, we don't know when. 
But what we do know is it'll be a cosmic in scope, lightning flashing across the skies. Suddenly, when everyday life is happening, eating, drinking, marrying, buying, selling, planting, building, and then boom, it's going to happen. So that's what we know. So Jesus, they asked the question, when is this going to happen? When's this finally everything on this bad earth going to get fixed? And Jesus says, here's what I can tell you. And then you get to 18, and, and, and here's what he says. So let's all go to Luke 18 now. And here's what he says. So it starts with this. It seems pretty straight. But there's a twist in this one that we can't miss. So we're going to walk through it one section at a time. So verse 1, so right on top, right? So on the table of this ecclesiological um, teaching of Jesus, he says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So, so put yourself in the context now, right? So, so he just told them about this, this event, the second coming, that's going to be crazy, and he's going to, this judgment, all these things when you read it. And so they've got to be asking, right? They've got to be asking. That's going to be really hard. So Jesus says, I'm going to tell you a parable to show them they should always pray and, 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 and not give up, and not give up. So, so, it's pretty straightforward if we were just stop on this one. And this is a truth, right? All, none of us would probably disagree that we should pray and, and we, should, we should keep the faith and, and not give up hope, right? We wouldn't disagree that staying strong in this life is a good thing. Uh, the Bible tells us later, you know, pray without ceasing and lift your request to God and, and pray continually. So there's, there's nothing wrong with that. My, my wife is a prayer machine. She's got journals of praying. Each kid's got a journal, each grandkid. And, and, and this is my, this is my uh, Prairie Lakes um, prayer beads, okay? So these are my kids. This is my wife. And, and there's nothing wrong, right? We're called to do this. So, so we're called to pray. I've got Kay and Chris and Allie and Shane and Brent and Ben and Carly and Rhett and Colton and Jackson Haddon and Owen, Kuiper, Brock, Jack, Davey and Quinn. <laughs> and and they're, they're all on here. We can pray for them and and, and I hold them in my hands sometimes. I just pray for my family, right? So there's nothing wrong with, with continually praying, right? That, that's, there's, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. But one thing that we can kind of grab from this is not just that, and it's straightforward, but not just that, that is, for some reason, Jesus is saying that there's going to be times when you're going to want to give up. There's going to be times when it's going to be really hard. And, and what we know is this, that following Jesus We'll have hard times and seasons when giving up on the faith will be a real temptation. God never once says, follow me and I'll make everything easy for you. He never does that. In fact, when you sign up to follow Jesus, we call that the faith line, when you finally go, I can't do it and I surrender. And many of you have made that decision even recently. And honestly, if you're sitting here right now and you're here today and you've never just said, okay, I, I can't do it. And you, you're sick of yourself. If you've been just afraid of that decision, listen, this is your day to do it. Because when you sign up, when you do that, when you finally say, I can't do it. Jesus, you're my only hope. You're the one I trust. Here's what happens. You're going to have a smooth life forever. Nothing's going to go wrong. No, it's, it's not right, okay? It's not right. In fact, Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, there will be tough times. There, there will be. You're surrendering your rights to your life and to your will, to the God of the universe. You're marching to the beat of a, of a different drum. You have an, 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 an allegiance to a different kingdom, a citizenship that's not on earth, but it's in heaven. You will have times when losing heart and faith and hope is a screaming possibility. And so Jesus is saying in this context, until he comes again, until he sets things right, giving up on God and faith and losing hope could be a real temptation waiting for God to set things right. Seems like a long wait sometimes. So, so Jesus starts, and it starts, so he told them this, so they would keep praying and wouldn't give up. So, so what's keep praying and not give up look like? Okay, so, so here it is. So here's the story now. So he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. Okay, so this guy's a class A 
dork. Okay, he is, right? He's one of those, he's one of those people you don't want to cry. He doesn't care what you think of him, and he doesn't care what God thinks. He's the he thinks he's the master of, of his own universe, right? And, and he, okay, right? So, so okay. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. So just sit on that just for a minute and just, just put the, set the stage, right? So how do we keep praying and not give up? And Jesus says, well, listen, there was this judge who was really bad. And there's this woman who had him injustice. And she would come to this guy and she would say, grant me justice uh, 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 against my adversary. Okay, so, so here's the scene. It's the powerful over the vulnerable. Some of you felt that very real sting of this one, whether it's the way back in the day of a schoolyard bully or a teacher or a coach or even a, I hate to say it, but a pastor who revels in power and, and holds it over people or a boss or a corporation that powers up because they know that you have no recourse or a wife or a child or any vulnerable person that's in a spot where somebody's powering up. This is a part of the human existence whether it's a person or whether it's cancer or sexual sin or greed. This is a part of the deal. Things aren't right. Things aren't right. And Jesus sets the scene. He says, in a certain town, there was the judge. And here's what he was like. He didn't fear God and he didn't fear people. And there's this widow who, who got cheated over badly. And she kept coming to him and said, grant me, grant me justice, okay? So, so what does keep praying and not give up look like Further, so look what he says next. So he says, for some time he refused, talking about the judge, right? But finally, finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And it's just, right, so, so it's, this, it's, it's this crazy story, this crazy widow. She, she's been cheated over. There's been injustice to her, and she just keeps coming, and she won't let it go, and she just keeps coming, and she doesn't get tired. She just keeps coming and says, and finally, the guy says, listen, I don't fear God or care people think, but she just keeps bothering me. Enough. Just, to, she'll, just so she'll go away, I'm going to grant her justice, and, and I, I don't want her to come and attack me, right? So, 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 as he, as, he, as he sets the scene, right, as, as he sets the scene, he, he sets it like this. It's the powerful over the vulnerable. And it's this crazy story about this widow. But here's, the, here's what we have to be really careful of. We've got to be really careful that we don't stop here in the story. Okay, we, we, we can't stop here. Some, some people have the picture that this is, this is really what God is like. And, and you mean Jesus is saying that here's how we get our prayers answered? We just keep bothering God and we just keep bothering God and even though he doesn't really care, do we just keep bothering, we just keep talking, we just keep asking, finally, he's going to get so tired of us that he'll eventually just say, fine, Fuller, I'll grant your prayer. And if we stop there, that, that, and then the, the cursory reading, right? You might think that, but that's not what Jesus' point is. Remember, the point is, what's it mean to keep on praying and not give up when things aren't right? So Jesus says, and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Okay, so the judge says, okay, just to get her to shut up, man. And will not God? Bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I, and this is Jesus now, I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. Right? So, so this is an unusual, this is a, 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 not an unusual way, like from lesser to greater, that, that Jesus tells stories. And he says, man, if, if this can happen here, how much more? Can it, can it happen here? In fact, earlier in, in Luke, he, he tells a story, and, and he says this. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion, right? So Jesus asks, like, like what? And, and it goes to the greater. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him?
right? So, so Jesus is setting it up. Pray, like, okay, uh, until, until the second coming happens, right? Until the timing is right, until, until it happens, listen, it's going to be crazy. So you, you got to keep praying, then you can't give up. And there's going to be times when you're going to want to give up. But, but, but what's it mean? It means you be like that widow who just won't give up. And you keep praying. And then Jesus comes back to it, right? And he comes back to it, right? So the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. And then Jesus closes the story. The bracket ends with this. However, when the Son of Man comes, remember back to 1720, will he find faith on the earth? See what Jesus is doing here? He's setting this up. Life is going to be messy. Injustice is going to be a part, of the, a part of the sinful human existence. Bad things and horrible things. It's just, it's just a part of it. And the temptation for us is going to be, the temptation for us is, come on, Jesus. Come on, fix this. When are you going to come back and make all of this right, finally? Will you just do it? And the very real temptation is going to be for us to give up and give up hope and pull our best Martha and say, I guess you don't care because you're not fixing this. But my friends, I want, you to, I want you to just see how Jesus ends. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And the question is, what kind of faith? What's he? What's he talking about? What kind of faith is he, is he looking for? He's looking for the kind of faith that he just talked about in the story. Like the widow who just didn't lose hope. Who just knew that, that, that justice would come. The kind of faith that, that says, even though it looks bad now, I'm not going to give up. Someday it'll get set right. Someday it'll fix it. Someday he'll make it all work. <laughs> it's just, and, and, and think about this. Remember early in the ministry of Jesus, his disciples said, Jesus, would you, would you teach us how to pray? And we, we spent a whole month on this prayer a while ago. And, and, and in, in Matthew, he says this. In Matthew 6, it says, this then is how you should pray. This is Jesus talking. And all of us are, a lot of us are familiar with this. When the Lord's Prayer, the, actually it's the disciples' prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And look what he says. Look, he says, this is how you pray. God, you're up there. God, you're, you're, you're great. God, you're great. Your name is great. And then he says, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught this long before we got to Luke 18. And he taught us this principle. That God's going to get it done. God's got a will that's going to come. God's going to fix things someday. He's going to get it all right. He's going to set things straight. And we ask sometimes, we go, well, well why does it take so long? I mean, there, there's, there's wars and there's famine and there's kids and there's crazy stuff, right? There's, there's people who are good people who are trying to follow Jesus who are being persecuted just for, just for having a Bible or just, it's everywhere. Why don't you fix it, God? Why don't you come now? Peter, he, Peter in, in, in the book of 2 Peter, he, he reminded us of this. We've got to remember this in these times while we're waiting for Jesus to fix it all. Peter, in 2 Peter 3, 8, 9, he says this, but don't forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like a day. In other words, God's not bound, right? He's in control. And then he says this, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. And what's his promise? That Jesus is going to return. That the sun is going to come back. That things are going to get fixed. That's his promise. As some understand slow. He's not slow as some understand slowness. But catch this now. He's that he's patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish. But everyone to come to repentance. You see, I want justice and I want justice. I want my problems fixed. I want the valley to end and so do you. 
But listen, God's timing isn't our timing. And God's going to do his thing in his time. And Peter says, and here's, here's why, here's why, because he wants everyone, right? He wants everyone to come to repentance. He's not wanting anyone to perish. He's given everybody a chance. And so when we cry out, come on, God, come on, Jesus, come on, come back. He's got it figured out. Don't give up hope. Someday, the sky will crack open. Lightning from the east to the west and it'll come to fix things. <laughs> Revelation is a great story about end times. But in 1 Thessalonians, um, Paul says this in describing kind of some of this eschatological things. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven. So there it is, someday. The Lord himself is going to come down. And with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. But just see something with me here. For the Lord himself will come down with a loud command. <laughs> you know, talked about this before, but we don't know it doesn't say. How cool. Can you imagine this? Jesus cracks open the sky and he says, enough, enough. It's time to set things right. My friends, hear this. The question at the end isn't, from, from Jesus isn't, will God respond to our prayers? The question at the end is, will we respond to God and trust his faithfulness to fulfill his promise, even when it's hard? So Jesus tells this whole story about the persistent widow. Yeah, keep praying. God will, yeah, yeah. But the whole story is this. Keep praying and don't quit. God will set things right someday. Someday. Let's pray right now together. All bow your heads with me. God, would you increase our faith? Would you fill up our courage? Would you fill up our hope? That we'll just keep praying and we'll keep waiting and we'll keep the faith until that day comes when you come back to fix everything. And God, my prayer for for Prairie Lakes, for your people, is that you'll find us just like the widow who didn't back down, who didn't give up. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.